Good afternoon. I'm Catherine Flanagan. I'm the Vice President of Communication for the Brevard Author Society. And today I'm at the Authors to Authors Conference in Melbourne, Florida. And with me is Karen Whiting. And she's the author of over 25 books. And she's brought several of them because they're in different genres. She's brought several of them with her today. Would you like to talk to us about some of them? Oh, I would love to, Catherine. Thank you. This one is my mini dream room. It's an inspirational craft book because really crafts and puppetry were where I started, partly because I grew up doing crafts with my grandmothers, did crafts with my children, and it was just so much fun. And they have done very well. Some of them have gone into 20 printings. We're looking at doing new editions of some of them in about two years. And then I have my bread book, The Gift of Bread, Recipes for the Heart and the Table. I grew up in the restaurant business and dairy farm community up in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and I just loved cooking. I cooked with grandmothers and great grandmothers since the time I was a little girl and collected all these recipes. So there's 60 recipes in the book, tips on making bread. So if you ever don't make it well, this tells you why and how to fix that. And each chapter has an inspirational element of talking about bread in the Bible. It has a heartwarming story around bread. Mm -hmm. And it has the recipe or tips on centerpieces, making bread, sending bread, things like that. And then this one, 52 Weekly Devotions for Busy Families, came out last summer and it's done so well already they asked me to do a new one. So it'll be 52 Weekly Devotions for Families Who Impact Lives or Families Who Serve. We don't have the final title yet. You know, mm -hmm. it's a working title as you're doing it. Yes. But it'll be really fun and easy again for the families to do, but we'll be focusing on the uniqueness of families who are military, first responders, your firefighters, your EMTs, your police, and uh, what it's like in those families, as well as uh, why they have been called to serve, and how the whole family gets incorporated into that. Uh, that's, yeah, the big do ones in those types of families. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Is there one specific genre that you like better than the rest? Because you seem to have several. Well, actually what happens is my brain is growing tomorrow's wholesome families today. And I'm all about the family. So whether I'm writing to the woman and my hope devotional that was in Cracker Barrel and things, or I'm writing to the child, I'm always thinking about what, how can I help them make their own family stronger and healthier and more wholesome and build those bonds. So I like all the ages, but I'm really very focused on family. Okay, okay. Well, do you write every day? I do, <laughs> unless I'm traveling and speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, my next trip is a couple weeks away in which I'll be doing a two hour cooking television show up in uh, uh, North Augusta, Georgia. And then I'll be heading over to be taped for another television show. And then I will be speaking at the New Age Writers Conference. So, yeah. A lot of travel. Yes, so I won't problem. be writing as much at that time, but mm -hmm. most of the time I'm writing every day. Every day. Do you, uh, do you set a specific amount of words that you write per day when you are writing and when you are at home or not? It depends on the type of book that it is. So right now where I'm writing the family one that we mentioned, mm -hmm. I try to write three of the units a week. Okay. Okay, and because that involves interviewing families and getting the stories and then making them into a 200 word story that will work out and then having all the activities that go around that week in that story. And I also am writing a certain number of devotions every week because I write for a radio network. Okay. And I also have articles to write, so I have an article due on Tuesday or for finishing up and another article due in this week. Are these more in um, uh, religious newspapers or? Yes, most of them like Crosswalk, Belief Net, uh, Bleeding Hearts, which is a Christian magazine for women who are readers and who want to lead other people, which is, that is really a crossover because you not just inspiration in there, there's a lot on how to be a better lead woman who leads. Very good. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to be a writer? An I really never decided to write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I am a mathematician. <laughs> okay. And while I was raising my children, everyone said, you should write. Look at all the things you do with your children. My children love going to your house and give us all the answers when I need anything. And I thought, I don't know that I have all the answers ever. but. I started to write when my oldest started college and my youngest started preschool that September. So there's a big spread between the oldest and youngest of my five. Mm -hmm. And I went to a writer's conference and it just sort of snowballed from there because people, I thought I would write one book I'd be done. But 
these editors asked me to send things in and they started publishing what I was writing. I was sort of amazed. <laughs> so you've been mostly with traditional publishers then? Completely with traditional publishers, yes. Completely. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's very, very good, very good. Um, did you, uh, what can we expect from you from the in the future besides your devotional book? Well, that family one is one of three that they want me to do. It looks like I'll be doing something for preschools for parents to do with their children. It's going to have a really fun element. We don't know if we're going to do color or black and white, but it's going to be an activity to go with each little story every day, and there'll be specific questions that will be helping them learn their cognitive reading skills at preschool ages. And then after that, the next book they want me to do will be another inspirational craft book for girls, but on paper crafts, and it will combine paper crafts and written etiquette. We are losing that skill. That's true, we are. Well, they're not teaching cursive at home in schools. Right, so but there are so many kids are texting and everything that they're not learning complete sentences already. That's true. <laughs> Very true. Learning how to write things and how do I express sympathy or congratulations and anything else to friends. How can I make a centerpiece that's full of words that can help us talk at the table instead of you know looking at our phones? Very good. Was there someone in your childhood that, that inspired you or changed the direction of your life? My grandmother is my great grandmother. I had I grew up with a lot of family, mm -hmm. and my two grandmothers who knew each other they uh, from for years. You know, they went to each other's bridal shower. Well, it was really a close movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents knew each other from the cradle. They just taught me so much on crafts and on persistence, and you know that we would keep doing something like. One grandmother, two houses away, we had a knit and stitch club, a ribbon stitch club, that I'd go there for tea after school with my cousin Kathy, and we would work on knitting, and then if we made mistakes, we had to work back. The tears would come, and she, she or something she was doing back with an imaginary mistake somewhere until we laughed, and would teach us to persevere until we got it right, which really helped me as a writer to keep writing and rewriting until it's right. Until it's right. That's yes. right. So what, what information would you give to uh, young, young authors, young inspired authors? You know, I would tell them to write what they know, mm -hmm. to be willing to edit and not think that what they wrote is just the most perfect thing, to understand that it can be polished more for publication, and to not just learn the craft of writing, but learn your marketing. <laughs> yes, yes. What, what advice would you give to someone who would like to be published? I would say they really have to learn how to write a good proposal and learn how to do a great pitch and start building a platform. As soon as you have an idea for a book, you should be building your platform and thinking of the ways to market it right then. Okay, so when you say platform, that's what you're thinking about is marketing the book? Is that what you're yes. referring to? Yes, yes. So that incorporates, there are several ways of doing that. Speaking, mm -hmm. social media, mm -hmm. print, which is your articles, any freebie materials, and business card, everything that you hand out, you're becoming an expert that people will want to quote you and talk to you, and I'm missing one other area, so let me think again, persistence, speaking, print, social media, oh, and media itself, right, what we're doing right now, <laughs> isn't that funny, television, radio, you know, I hosted a television series for a while, in educational television, you're yeah. basically getting your name out there, yes, getting yes, your name out there. Okay, um, so uh, is there anything that you'd like to touch on that I haven't asked you about? Anything? I think one of the things is to remember that writing can be lonely. You know, you're off in your own little world. Make sure you engage with other writers. Mm -hmm. As you engage with readers, you engage with people. When you talk to people, ask what they're reading, what they like to read, what they would want to read. And, and go into bookstores. We're losing our bookstores. I know. That is sad. Tragic. Very sad. And you think, oh, but it's cheaper if I buy it online. And you know what? I realize it might be cheaper that way, but you're not keeping it afloat and you're not keeping that center for us to go to of sharing knowledge and being able to enjoy books. And you know, there's nothing quite like going into a store and finding a book that you like and finding a new author and things. And so I would say you have to engage in all of those areas and not just stay in your little lane. Okay. So uh, if people wanted to contact you, do you have your little website? I do, and it's my name, karenwhiting.com, K-A-R-E-N-W-H-I-T-I-N-G.com. 
And are you also on Twitter? I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm a little bit on Instagram, I'm on Pinterest. Okay, so she has many ways that you can contact her. And I want to thank you for being here this afternoon with us. It was very much fun. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.